Give me that back. Oh. I have tissue. <laughs> Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. There's another opportunity oh. for us to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. Know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, Peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that uh, couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, and the saints in the, around the world that we don't even know about. Uh, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, what were we talking about last week? Uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I think we got a little bit of Ezekiel out the way, too. No, nah, we ain't touching with Ezekiel. Who else we talk about? Are Jeremiah, sure? who else? It was two prophets, but who else? Jeremiah, Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, you remember? So you remember uh, Jeremiah told us that that uh, Nebuchadnezzar was going to come. You got to understand that Jeremiah was telling us that Nebuchadnezzar is the big dog, right? He tell you like Nebuchadnezzar, most high God giving Nebuchadnezzar the whole world. Just bow down to it. Allow it to happen, right? And you take a people like us, we Hebrews, we Israelites, you know what I'm saying? We don't bow down to nobody. We the only people that was chosen by the most high God. What you talking about? Our skin black, hair nappy, and we look darn good. Right? And you you think we about to let one of these Gentiles, they look like Indians, right? Like let, let one of these Gentiles come over to us. You know what I'm saying? Take us up. Oh, please. That's never gonna happen. That's how we think it. Jeremiah's like, no, 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 no. Y'all gonna have to give it up and go serve these people. Y'all wouldn't serve God, so y'all gonna have to go serve these people. And if you go and just make it easy. Most high God to at least bring you back to your land one day. But anybody who make it hard and disobey, and your butt gonna get punished. You might just die. So the people not liking what Jeremiah is doing, they put him in jail. Remember, we talked about how Jeremiah went to jail a whole bunch of times. We're gonna keep reading about how often Jeremiah get put in jail. He get put in jail a lot. One time he got put in there for a minute. For a little minute, he had to sit down. Mm -hmm. Right? And so he get put in jail. So he got ended up getting put in jail last week. And we also talked about Daniel because Nebuchadnezzar actually came. And he took over our land. So you remember he hired the people up north, the Syrians. And he hired the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Edomites, right? Hired them all because they all served Nebuchadnezzar. He took over their land already. So he told them, come jump us, right? So all the nations came together with us. And then they took us. They beat us out, whooped us out real quick. And then they took the temple. They took they, they didn't destroy the temple, but they start taking stuff out of our temple, all our gold, all the stuff we were storing. And then they took our king and everybody. Right. So we we're just sitting there. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of like where we left off. We talked about how Daniel was one of the people that got taken and how Daniel went over there. And you remember our people. We don't eat that. Nasty. We don't eat no pork. You know what I'm saying? We're not eating. We're not eating no shellfish, no crawfish, none of all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We left. We leave all that stuff alone. So when Daniel went over there, you know, these people eat anything. Right. So Daniel was like, no, nah, don't don't feed us all that stuff. We'll just eat the vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Just feed us vegetables. Book the book called it pulse. Right. So we'll just eat the pulse talking about vegetables and fruits and everything. So he gave them, you know, what I'm saying, start giving them fruit. And they was worried like, man, if we give y'all only fruit and vegetables, y'all gonna mess around and be skinny and frail and all that. And the king gonna be mad at us because y'all don't look good. They was like, give us 10 days. You know what I'm saying? Just feed us the vegetables for 10 days. And let's see how we turn out. And sure enough, Daniel and the boys look better than the rest of them when they when they got done. So um, we're going to continue to read Daniel. But before we get back to Daniel, I want to get back to Jeremiah. Remember, Jeremiah is in prison. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 25. Give me verse one. Jeremiah chapter 25, verse one. What did the book say? Brother T in the house, y'all, you know what I mean? It's a joyous occasion. You know what I'm talking about? Long time coming. He, you know what I'm saying? He tried to come out here and celebrate Christmas. I stopped him, though, y'all. <laughs> you got me. I stopped him. Disrespect. <laughs> What's wrong with this dude? <laughs> Crazy. He's out there trying to get a big Christmas tree. I said, oh! <laughs> For the first time, watches. 
was all cap, <laughs> <laughs> like the kids just say. <laughs> Whatever. All y'all lingo come from us anyway. Y'all just y'all off of cap. Cap is cap is not. Y'all don't say that no more. Huh? What y'all be saying now? What's the new one? Y'all gotta keep me updated. Everybody quiet. You gotta keep me updated. Y'all can't be having y'all look. I'm looking crazy now. That's cap. The fact that y'all not on cap <laughs> is cap. <laughs> is that cap? That's cap. What is it? A code of silence or something? <laughs> like I'm trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> can't none of y'all beat me up. I'm telling you the truth. Not one of y'all. Twenty seconds. After 20 seconds, maybe. You know what I'm saying? First 20 seconds, can't none of y'all get me. Even together, y'all can't get me. So look, this is how we're going to... Oh, that's funny? <laughs> that's wild. We're going we gonna to pause the live broadcast just for a second. <laughs> you know, I just need everybody to pull them off me at 20 seconds on the dot. You know what I'm 20 seconds on the dot. You get them all off me. It's over. You know what I'm saying? First 20 seconds, I'm lighting y'all, but yeah, 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 all y'all. All right, so listen. I want to know what the new cap is, too. Uh... Uh, this is uh, Jeremiah chapter 25. Give me verse one. The word that came, the word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. The which Jeremiah, the prophet, spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, from the 13th year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and 20th year. The word of the Lord has come unto me. So look, he said Josiah, the king of Judah, right? So Josiah, the king of Judah is way back here, right? So he said from the 13th year of Josiah, he's talking about right here, from the 13th year of Josiah, even until who, when? And it's unto this day, that is the three and 20th year, the word of the Lord has come unto me and I have spoken unto you rising early speaking, but you have not hearkened. So he's saying even unto right here, right? Even unto right here, we still talking and y'all still not listening. Right? So you have to understand the struggle that Jeremiah got. Jeremiah didn't just pop up talking. He'd been talking for a long time, trying to explain to people, like, this is what the Most High God said do. This is what the Most High God said do. This is what he said he's going to do if you don't listen. This is what he said he's going to do if you don't. And just repeating himself and saying new words and trying to get people to understand. So you, you got to understand, like, we be thinking about being a prophet and be like, oh, that might be a little fly. Most how I get you work. That's cool. Like, for the first year, that it probably is fly. Like, the first time Most High God give you something and you give it, you probably think, oh, the people going to hear me and respect me. But that's not his experience. The people heard him was like, you know, get your, you know what I'm saying? And then they start punching them and putting them in jail. So imagine dealing with that for 23 years. Nobody listening to you. Everybody want to beat you up. Everybody want to put you in jail. And you think you doing it for the right reasons. It's tough. That's why a couple weeks ago we talked about how he was depressed, how he was dealing with depression. Right? Because it's it's tough. You think you doing the right thing, don't nobody care. Don't nobody respect it. And you believe what you are talking about. You like, "Please believe me. Y'all going to get messed up. I'm trying to save our nation." No, nah, we ain't got nothing to do with it, right? So let's keep going. Watch this. And the Lord has sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them. But you have not hearkened, nor mm -hmm. inclined your ear to hear. So that's all these prophets in the middle, the ones that's yellow, green, red. You know what I'm saying? Those are all different prophets that he has sent, starting with Micah and Isaiah, right? So if Micah, Isaiah, then he keep darn going to, to Nahum and uh, uh, Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Joel, and then Jeremiah himself, right? He said, I sent all these, and there's more prophets than that. These are just the ones that we got books on. But there's more prophets than that. He said, I sent all these boys, and none of y'all is listening. Keep going. Watch this. Jeremiah trying to talk to you, boy. They said, turn ye again now, everyone, from his evil way, mm -hmm. and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land that the Lord has given unto you, and to your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods to serve them and to worship them, and provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. He said, provoke me not to anger with the works of your hands, because you know what we used to do. You know what I'm saying? We still do it, right? But you know what we used to do? We used to go out and we used to say, you know what? I love, I love the most high God. Oh, his name is Yahuwah. You know, the God of Moses. And then we'll go out and we'll make a golden calf and bow down to it and call it the most high God and call it the God of Moses. Right? He didn't like that. And they do no different now. Right? The Hebrew Israelite pop out everything they got. They got six point stars. 
You know what I'm saying? Talking about this, the star of David. The Christians got the cross hanging from their neck. Fly cross too. Iced out. Jesus piece. You know what I'm saying? You remember the Kanye West Jesus piece? They still wear Jesus pieces? They ain't cool no more Jesus pieces? Well, good riddance. They still wear crosses. Okay, what they be wearing? The onk? Ain't that what they call it? The onk? The cross that got the little top? I know I didn't saw the onk. Y'all ain't, ain't, ain't cool. That's what I'm going to talk to the cool kids. Zakai. They be wearing the onk? Just say yes, son. Right. They be having all these little things, all this, all, you know what I'm saying, all the jewelry, and that's what we do. And we think we doing it to serve God. I think I got this cross. Some of these, some of these people think the cross is protecting them. They go through something, they hold the cross up like this. Right. Some of the some of the most Christian of Christians, they'll tell you, I mean, I wear the cross, but I don't worship it. It doesn't mean anything to me. So what I want y'all to do next time a Christian say that, just snatch it off their neck and then stomp on it. You're going to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? But snatch it off their neck and then stomp on it just like this and just and just tell them, I thought it didn't mean nothing. I bet you they're going to look at you like they ain't going to look at you like you took some of my property. They're going to look at you like you disrespected my God. That's how they're going to look at you. Because it do mean something to him, right? But the most high God, he told us, he said, and uh, we ain't got to get it, but in Exodus, he told us, or in uh, Deuteronomy, he told us, he said, we saw no image when the most high God spoke to us out of the mountain. He said, we saw no image. He didn't show us any image, right? So he said, therefore, don't make anything in the fashion of anything in the above. That's talking about the, the birds. And you know how you ride behind a car and they got the bird, you know what I'm saying? They got the little dove or they put the little dove on your Bible. That's what they do. He said, don't make anything that fly above. He said, don't make anything that's underneath the ground or in the water. You know, you got the fish. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen the fish on the back of a Bible or in the back of a car? You know what I'm saying? Got the little fish. That's a Christian symbol, too. They make the fish. They said, don't anything that walk on the ground and no image of anything. So then they make an image of a cross or an image of a Jesus face. Right. Or praying hands. Right. You ever seen the praying hands? They got the praying hands. They the, the, the Mexicans, what they do. No disrespect, I love Mexicans, too. But look. They, they, the Mexicans have put a whole bunch of candles. I was watching Breaking Bad. And so in Breaking Bad, the Mexican put a whole bunch of candles. You know what I'm saying? And then stacked them up. And then he was, you know what I'm saying, putting some type of ritual towards the candles and everything. Just lit all them things. But a lot of them had the Jesus face, the Mary face and the Jesus. They worship Mary. Right? So it's all types of stuff that people have learned to do when our book tells them specifically not to do it. I bring all that up because we were no different. Right. A lot of times you listen to these Hebrews and they tell you they make it seem like, oh, we better than these Gentiles. You have to understand the reason why we're in the position that we're in right now is because we chose to be like the Gentiles. So the most High God said, OK, I'm going to really make y'all like Gentiles. And he put us in captivity over here. But in reality, what we have to do is we have to learn from our history. We have to look at our history and say, you know what? Maybe maybe I should think twice about the stuff that I'm doing. Right. I know I want to do some stuff. I know everybody else doing some stuff, but maybe I should think twice. Christmas is cool. It is like, it's, you know, what I'm saying that thing is cool. But guess what? Maybe I should think twice about what it is. Right. Do it make sense? that I'm bowing down to this star that's on top of this thing. If you're a Christian Christian, it's a cross up there. They ain't going to put no star. Christian, what I'm going to put a star at the top of the tree for? Got to be a cross. Jesus Christ. It makes sense that I'm going to bow down to a cross. Then you know what they're going to say? I ain't bound down to nothing. I'm just wrapping gifts up. Oh, of course, I get it. I understand. Right? These are the type of things we have to be aware of. And we have to separate ourselves from all the stuff of this world. Can't be wearing those darn crosses, putting fish and, and doves and, and praying hands all over the stuff that we own, trying to represent some of the most high God. How do we represent the most high God? Obedience. That's it. How do you give glory to the most high God? Medium. All right, good fruit. We ain't got to get it, but if we look at uh John chapter 15, John chapter 15, you said most high God is glorified by producing fruit. Right? That's what you gotta do. When you, to produce fruit, that means that you got you got your behavior is good. You have behavior that lines up with what the book says. When you got behavior that lines up with the book, say that's what glorify God. The rest of the stuff is glory for us. We be wanting somebody to call us great. We want somebody to call us cool. You gotta get that stuff up. I used to be cool. I'm still cool now, <laughs> but I used to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Then you, what's so funny? <laughs> you all right? All right, gotta make sure. You know what I'm saying? Every, every... 
Well, I guess. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk about him in a second. A little feeling going to be hurt. But um, uh, we, have to, we have to make sure that we separate ourselves, not by what we wear necessarily, but spe- specifically how we behave according to the book. You know what I'm saying? And that's what that's what uh, Jeremiah trying to get our people to do back then. But we got the same struggles that we got now. Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, saith Yahuwah, mm-hmm. that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Therefore, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the, the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them. And make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Right? Isn't that what he did last week? Remember last week, he brought the families of the north, the Syrians. Right? And they came down and got it. So I'm just reading this to recap. Now, some of this hasn't happened yet. He hasn't made us an astonishment and a hissing yet. He's going to do that part. Right? But they started the process. They took some of our people. They took them over into Babylon. And then they also stole some of the stuff out of our temple. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of myrrh and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. In other words, you say, I'm going to make everybody sad. Right. Keep going. And the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And How many? 70 years. All right. We got to do some counting now. Keep going. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation says, Yahuwah, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and will make it a perpetual desolation. Mm-hmm. And I will bring upon that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book, which Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. Mm-hmm. For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Mm-hmm. For thus says the Lord God of Israel unto me. Take the wine cup of this fury in my hand and cause all the nations to whom I sent to whom I send thee to drink it. Now, look at the imagery that the most high God gives. You, right. Think about a cup. You know what I'm saying? We, we usually have a glass so we can think about it how we would have nowadays. Yeah, like a wine glass. So think about that. And it's filled with wine. What color is wine? Real wine. You can say purple is red, though, right? You know what I'm saying? Look like blood. So the imagery is, hey, take this cup. That's filled with wine, right? And why, what does he call it? The wine, the wine of his what? And take, cause all the nations whom I send thee to drink it, the cup of this fury in, at my hand. Right? It's his fury, his wrath, right? So the wine represents the Most High God's wrath. And he's saying, take these glasses or take these cups and go take it to the nations. So you're, you gotta, you gotta understand how real this was, right? You're a man. You're a regular guy, right? You talking to people for 23 years in your nation. These your friends and family members. Ain't nobody. They punch you in your face when you talk to them. Like, man, shut up. You know what I'm saying? Get out of here. Man, put that boy in jail again, right? Putting you in your family, your people, putting you in jail, right? After that, the most high God say, yo, yo, yo. But look, take this glass. It's the wine of my fury. And then go take that to all these other nations, these foreign nations. These are nations that don't like you to begin with, right? These people race, just like how we deal with racism, these people racist against you anyway, right? He said, take this glass to them and go give it to them, right? And this is, this is a cup of my fury, right? Watch this. Keep going. Watch what he got to tell them. And they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then took I the cup of the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord has sent me. To wit, Jerusalem and the cities of Judah and the kings thereof and the princes thereof to make them a desolation and astonishment and a hissing and a curse as it is this day. Pharaoh, king of Egypt and his servants and his princes and all his people and all the Minko people. And all the kings of the land of Uz, and all the kings of the land of Philistines, and Ashkelon, and Azza, and Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod, Edom, and Moab, and the children of Ammon, and all the kings of Tyre, and all the kings of Zidon, and the kings of the isles, which are beyond the sea, Dedan, Tema, and Booz, all that are in the utmost corners, and all the kings of Arabia, and all the kings of the Mingo people that dwell in the desert, and all the kings of Zimri, and all the kings of Elam, and all the kings of the Medes, 
and all the kings of the north, far and near, one with another, and all the kingdoms of the world, which are upon the face of the earth, and the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, Drink ye and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup of at thine hand to look drink. Look what happened, look. Look what happened if he take it to these places and they refuse it. Like, boy, I ain't drinking that. Right? Most people gonna look at you like, man, I'm about to drink that mess. Look what he gotta say to them if they refuse it. Then shall you say unto them, thus says Yahuwah of hosts, you shall certainly drink. For lo, I began to bring evil upon the city which is called by my name. And should you be utterly unpunished? He said, listen, I, I already started getting the evil on my people. You gotta look at it from God's point of view. Listen, I chose a people. They're Israelites. These are my people, right? I'm punishing they butt right now. I'm sending the cup to let y'all know I'm about to punish y'all too. You refuse to drink it. What you think? I'm going to punish my people and I'm not going to punish y'all? He said, I already started punishing mine. I'm about to punish y'all too. Watch this. Keep going. Wait, wait. For lo, I began to bring evil on the city which is called by my name, and should you utterly be unpunished, ye shall not be unpunished, for I will call for a sword upon the inhabitants of the earth, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, mm -hmm. prophesy against them all these words and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his body, from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against the inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, says the Lord. And that's talking about the end. Right. That's talking about after we get back into our land, all these Gentiles and everybody, they're going to chase us back to our land because, you know, what I'm saying? it's going to be just like when Moses set us or Moses got us loose. You know what I'm saying? When Pharaoh said, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can go ahead. They kind of changed their mind afterwards. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember when Pharaoh, Pharaoh, he had he had to deal with 10 plagues, right? It started off with light stuff, just, you know, the water turning to blood. You know, it's just irritating stuff. Like, man, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Turn the water back to water. You know what I'm saying? So Moses did it. You know what I'm saying? That he lie. Each time he'd be like, all right, y'all can go, but you can only go so far. Right? And then Moses changed his mind and be like, nah, y'all can't go. Sit y'all butts down. You know what I'm saying? Y'all work for me. Then at the last, the last plague, when the Most High God said, I'm going to kill all of your firstborn children. Right? So Pharaoh was asleep. All the firstborn, like any anybody who was born first in their family, dead, right? Dead, just overnight, dead. So they wake up in the morning, and whoever the oldest, you know what I'm saying, son was of every family, dead. So some of these people are grown people, right? Imagine, imagine your grandpa, him being the oldest of his siblings, all dead. And then maybe somebody's first child, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just got this child, baby, lay down and sleep. Dead, baby, dead. How you think you feel when you wake up in the morning? That's the it. whole land, everybody's sad. It was a dead person in every household in the whole country. Everybody's sad, right? Especially when you know that that black man, Moses, was just telling us this is how it was going to happen. And Pharaoh, you my king, you didn't listen to him, and I lost my baby over this. I lost my grandpa over this. So everybody's sick. So you know what Pharaoh said? Man, just he 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 depressed too because he lost his baby. So just let him go. Just let him go. Right. So then we ran off. We like, all right, let's get up out of here. Let's go into our land. Then Pharaoh got mad after a while. He was like, no, nah, these people got us messed up. So they got on their chariots and their horses and they chased us down. That's when Moses split the sea. Y'all heard about Moses splitting the sea. Moses split the sea. He walked into the water. And then Pharaoh tried to chase him after it. And the sea came and swallowed him up. So in the same way, we here right now. And everybody think everything honky dairy. People look at us, they be like, oh, yeah, y'all black people. And they think all black people the same. They be looking at it like, okay, well, there's black people from Africa, black people from Jamaica, black people from everywhere, right? And they think all black people the same. What they're going to learn is the black people that came through on the slave trade is different from just the regular black people, right? The other black people, right? And so what's going to end up happening is us that, that were made slaves to be all over these different places. One day, the Most High God going to put a bunch of plagues on all these different countries, right? And when he put these plagues on all these different countries, he's going to tell us, yo, let's go. And these people going to let us go. And we're going to go and we go head back to our land 
and they're going to chase us in the exact same way. So that's what he's talking about. He said, I'm a plead with all nations. When he say plead with all nations, in other words, he's going to bring all nations to fight. And then he's going to warn them, like, listen, you don't want to do what you're doing. Y'all might want to relax. And after that, it's going to go down. And it's going to be called the battle, what, what is colloquially called the battle of Armageddon. You know what I'm saying? But we'll talk about that a little later. What you doing? Sit back down over there. Would you fall asleep? Just stand up. You'll be all right. Um, uh, that's the end of the chapter. No, keep going. Thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation and a, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Mm -hmm. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. Mm -hmm. Howl, ye shepherds, and cry and wallow yourselves in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and your dis dispersions are accomplished, and ye shall fall like the pleasant vessel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the shepherds shall have no way to flee for the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the sheep shepherds and the howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard. Mm -hmm. For the Lord shall, for the Lord has spoiled their pasture, and the peaceable habitations are cut down because of the fierce anger of the Lord. He has forsaken his covert as the lion, for their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor and because of his fierce anger. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty-six. Jeremiah chapter thirty-six. Ain't nobody lie to you understand this book. You understand what's right. You understand what's wrong. Nobody lied to you. You will learn how to lie to you because when you start lying to yourself, you start believing other people lie. You know what I'm saying? You keep your mind straight. Not only will it keep your mind healthy, but it'll also make it where nobody can lie to you. Nobody going to be able to lie to you. When they do lie to you, it ain't going to have no effect. You know what right is, you know what wrong is. Keep going, watch this. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 36. Give me verse 1. And it came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee a roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel, and against Judah, and against all the nations from the day that I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. So this is how we get the book of Jeremiah right here. The Most High God just told him, he was like, yo, 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 all the words I spoke to you, all the stuff you got, take a roll, make a book out of it, right? And write it all down, write all this stuff down, right? Keep going. It may be that the house of Judah will hear and all the evil which I propose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Mm -hmm. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he has spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. Mm -hmm. And Jeremiah commanded Baruch saying, I am shut up. I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore go thou and read in the roll, which thou hast written from my mouth, the words of the Lord and the ears of the people of the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return everyone from his evil way. For great is the anger and the fury that the Lord has pronounced against this people. And Baruch, the son of Neriah, did according to all that Jeremiah, the, son, the prophet, commanded him, reading in the book of the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the He's son in of the Josiah. Temple, right. So, so Baruch. So at this point, Jeremiah is in prison again. Part of the reason that Jeremiah. OK, so he just told Baruch to go to the temple when he say Yahuwah's house. He's talking about the temple. So Baruch goes to the temple and he's reading all this stuff that Jeremiah had been saying for 23 plus years. Right. He reading this stuff. Right. So you got to understand Baruch. If he know that they beat my man up and putting him in prison, Baruch probably ain't too excited about this. Either. He's like, man, I ain't no prophet. Most high God didn't call me out. You know, what I'm, I'm just your friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm your servant. So now he got to go. The reason why he tells him to go to the temple is because Jeremiah is a priest. 
So that's the, also the reason why Jeremiah get, get, get put in jail so much. Because the priest, think of the priest as like, the priest is kind of like the police, the politicians and all that. That's how the priests were in our community. You know what I'm saying? So the priest, they, they, they stand in there. Jeremiah is a priest. So he's going against, you ever thought about like a cop that go against other cops? You know what I'm saying? They all turn on them and they put them in jail or they have something to do. They, you know what I'm saying? They do something to them. So that's kind of how, how, how Jeremiah is. He's a priest. He turned on the other priest because he, pre, he, you know what I'm saying? He's uh, spitting prophecy against them and they not feeling it. So they keep putting them in jail. So he's telling Baruch, hold oh, we got. Grab uh, Jeremiah chapter one for me. This is Jeremiah chapter one. Because we read it a couple weeks ago, but I just want to make sure everybody caught it. This is Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 1. Jeremiah is the son of Aaron. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth. Of the what? Of the priests. So his, his pops were up, was of the priests, right? Of where? That were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Anathoth in the land of, land of Benjamin. And Anathos was given to the priest. Grab Joshua. This is Joshua chapter 21. Give me verse 1. Joshua who? Joshua chapter 21, verse 1. Jeremiah was of the priest in the land of Anathoth in Benjamin. Then came near the heads of the fathers of the Levites unto Eleazar the priest, and unto Joshua the son of Nun, and unto the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spake unto uh, to them in Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded by the hand of Moses to give us cities to dwell in with the suburbs thereof for our cattle. Right? So the priests and the Levites came to uh, Joshua and he said, yo, Moses got told by the most high God that we should have land to dwell in. Right. So he, they telling Moses, I mean, they telling Joshua, do something about this. We need land too. all the other tribes got their territories. Right. But remember, the Levites didn't get their own territories amongst the Levites are the priests. Watch this. And the children of Israel gave unto the Levites out of their inheritance at the commandment of the Lord, these cities and their suburbs. Right. So now it goes through a list of all the cities in the suburbs that the priests ended up being given from the other tribes because the other tribes had to get, you know, how you got a, uh, you know, how you got a, uh, you know, how, like everybody live in Las Vegas. Right. All of us live in Las Vegas. You know what I'm saying? And so as we live in Las Vegas, there are certain parts of town that no individual owns. Right. Like I own this house. My neighbor, they own that house. Somebody owned that house. Somebody owned that house. But if you go downtown, right, and go down to the, uh, what's it called? The Justice Center. Who owned that? Who owned the Justice Center? Don't laugh at my The wife. government. The government owned it. So no individual owns it, right? And that's kind of how, that's kind of how the priests work, right? Although these different tribes are owned by individual people. Now you got to have what's called public land, which would be like the priest land. That's what they call public land. When the government owns something, it's called public land because if the government owned it. Technically, the, all the people own it. Right. We all sharing it. So it, it, in a similar way, when the priest owns something, then that means that really nobody owns it. It's owned by God. Right. So uh, jump down to about verse uh, 18. Give me give me verse 17. And out of the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with their her suburbs, Geba with her suburbs, Anathoth with her suburbs, Who? Anathoth with her suburbs, and Alman with her suburbs, four cities. So one of the cities that was given out of the tribe of Benjamin was Anathoth to the priests. Right? So every tribe was like, oh, all this, you get the whole, you know what I'm saying? You get all of Summerlin. But downtown Summerlin, you got to get that to the priests. Right, you'll get all this land, but you got to get one area to the priests. You know what I'm saying? And that's what Anathoth was. So what Jeremiah was telling us in, in chapter one of his book, he was like, listen, I'm of the priests, Anathoth. So he's hanging out with the priests. 
when he's making these prophecies. The priests are looking at him like, what are you talking about? You a traitor. You need to walk in line with us. So you're going to jail. That's why they were so hard on him. So they punched him in the face. They put him in jail and all that. Fast forward, going back to 36, he's in jail now. Because he's in jail, the words still need to get out. So he tell Barack, look, go ahead and write all this stuff down. Matter of fact, write everything down that I've been telling them all these years. And then go read it to him in the temple. So now Barack in the middle of the temple reading the same stuff that these people put Jeremiah in jail for. Watch what happens. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that they proclaimed a fast before the Lord to all the people in Jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem. Then read Baruch in the book, in the book, the words Jeremiah in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the scribe, in the higher court, at the entry new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. Mm hmm when Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, then he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and lo, all the princes sat there, even Elishama, the scribe, and Del Deliah, the son of Shemiah, and El Nathan, the son of Akbor, and Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Mm -hmm. Then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore, the princes sent to sent Jehudi, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushai, unto Baruch, saying, Take in thy hand the roll wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people, and come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the roll in his hand and came unto them. All right, so they heard all these words. Micaiah, he ran down, he told, he was like, oh, yo, that boy up there talking though. He talking, talking. So he went to the ruler. When they say princes, he went to the rulers, the people who got authority, right? He's like, man, that boy up there talking, that same type of stuff that Jeremiah talking. He talking, man. What y'all think about it? You know what I'm saying? Because Micah, I, he in the middle. You know what I'm saying? He's like, man, what y'all think about it? And boy's like, man, send your hoodie, man. Go, go get that boy real quick. If he don't give it to you, just snatch it out of his hand, right? So they ran up and they're like, yo, yo, bring the book. We need you to come with us. So then he, they come. Watch this. He gonna come. Now it came to pass when they heard all the words that were, when they heard all the words, they were afraid one of another and said unto Baruch, we will surely tell the king of all these words. And they asked Baruch saying, tell us now, how did you write all these words in, at his mouth? Then Baruch answered them, he pronounced all these words unto me with his mouth and I wrote them with the ink in the book. Then said the princes of Baruch, go, hide thee, thou and Jeremiah, and let no man know where you are. And they went in, uh, they went into the king, into the court, but they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elishama, the scribe, and told all the words of the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll. All right. So listen, they told Jeremiah, because they know it's about to go down. They told Jeremiah, I mean, they told uh, Baruch, they was like, listen, go get Jeremiah and y'all both hide. Don't let nobody know. So they letting them out. They letting them out of prison. Look, d go run. Don't let nobody know where y'all are. Cause it might go down right now, right? They in the middle. They don't know how to feel about it, right? So they, they go ahead, they take the book and now they about to go take it to the king. This is King Jehoiakim, right? So we kind of, last week Jehoiakim got, he got killed, right? He got taken, or not killed, but he got taken, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and moved over into uh, Babylon, right? So now we kind of fast our uh, rewinding before that, right? This is the king's opportunity to turn himself around. Let's see. Keep going. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elishama, the scribe's chamber. And Jehudi read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood before the king. So now the king heard all these words that Jeremiah had been saying all these years. Right. Watch what the king do, though. Now, the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. Look, think of a fireplace. The king's sitting there, life, luxury room. He chilling. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and read it to me. Then. You know what I'm saying? That boy started reading it like, yeah. And then he said this, that, and the other. And he said this, ooh, some of this stuff is about you, king. He actually said that you're going to be taken and going to Babylon. Keep, keep reading it. You know what I'm saying? Okay, well, this, that, and another. So you got to feel uncomfortable even reading it because it's like he's talking against your kingdom. 
Like, all right, for sure. So King Jehoiakim is sitting there. He's listening to it. And he see the fire burning. What do you think he about to do? You think, about the, you think the king going to run away? He, he, he sees somebody reading out of the book. Nice fireplace right there. What do you think the king about to do? All right, let's read. What do you think? Stay there. Let's see. Leave. Okay, let's see. And when it, and it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves. <laughs> Look, he got the page four. You know what I'm saying? One. You want me to keep reading? Yeah. Two. Go ahead. Keep reading. Three. Man, I'm going to go ahead and go to four. Three or four leaves. What happened? When they say leaves, it's talking about pages. Right? He read three or four pages. Then what else happened? He cut it with the pen, pen, pen knife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. <laughs> Look, Jehoiakim wasn't going for none of that foolishness. He got the page four. He took a knife to it, slashed that thing like that, then ripped it out of his hand and threw it into the fire. That boy can't disrespect me in my kingdom. That's what he's looking at. You got to look at it from the king's point of view, right? From Jeremiah, look, from God's point of view, Jeremiah, we, we all know, oh, we serve God. God is holy. God is right. For sure, right? Now, that's cool. Now, let's put ourselves in the king. This is your kingdom. You run it. You make decisions. You've been sacrificing. You've been dealing with the king of Babylon. Rebelling against him for the sake of your people. The king of Babylon want to tax us. He want to treat us like dirt. He don't care nothing about us. I'm fighting for y'all. And I'm going to fight to the death. That's how Jeho Jehoiakim feel. Right? But then somebody come up talking about Jehoiakim, you messing up. You a sinner. Most high God going to punish you. Or he going he gonna to take the whole land from you. Going gonna kill to gonna kill your family. He gonna, you know what I'm saying? Then he gets to page four. Jehoiakim like, get that. Foolish, he's out of here. Throw that thing inside of the, you know what I'm saying, the fire, that thing burning up. Keep going, watch this. Yet they were not afraid, nor ripped their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Right? So what the book is trying to point out to us is, if somebody burned the word of God, anybody who served the most high God, that thing should hurt. You'd be like, man, that's like, we ain't got another copy of that. Somebody burned one of these, it's like, we got, okay, we got another one right here. It may not be a big deal. We don't have another copy of that. That was it. That was the one. And you just burned it. But nobody in the room was sad about it. Everybody just like, mm -hmm. King didn't like that too much. You know what I'm saying? Moving on. So what you want for dinner? You want me to go fetch it? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? King in a bad mood now. You know what I'm saying? Jehudi, why are you reading that? I told you not to read that stuff. You know what I'm saying? They probably arguing with each other. All right, keep going. Watch this. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. But the king commanded Jeremiel, the son of Hamelech, Hamelech, mm -hmm. and Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shilamiah, the son of Abdiel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet. But the Lord hid them. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah after the king had burned the roll and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again another roll and write <laughs> in it. All the former words that were in the first roll, which Jeho Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned. He said, make another book. Right? So they escaped. They ran. They sent people after him. They couldn't find him. Most High God came to Jeremiah again. He said, all right, I understand what happened. Make another book. And then write all the same words that you wrote in that one. Write it in this one. He had to do it again. So that's how we end up with the book that we got now. Right? Because people just, at this point, people just started to copy it and copy it and copy it until we can get it translated into English and all that good stuff. But our people used to speak Hebrew, right? Keep going. Watch this. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, thus says the Lord, thou shalt, thou hast burned this roll, saying, why have you written therein, saying the king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land and shall cause to cease from thence man and beast. Therefore, thus says the Lord of Jehoi, the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, mm -hmm. he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David and his dead body shall be cast out in the day of the heat, in the heat of the day and in the night to frost. And I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity. And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the men of Judah, all the evil that I pronounced against them. But they hearkened not. Then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah, all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned in the fire. And there were added besides unto them many like words. Right. So instead of just stopping with what he already wrote, 
he kept adding on to it the more prophecy. So that's how we get the full book of Jeremiah. Right. But he told him he is like Jehoiakim, because you you burn my words like that. You ain't gonna have no kids. Nobody gonna sit on the throne. You about to get did wrong. Ain't nobody gonna cry over you. It's about to be bad for you. Because yeah, Zedekiah was his. Zedekiah was his uncle. Was his uncle, yeah. Or his brother. It was his brother or his uncle. But, yeah, Zed yeah, Zedekiah was his brother. But yeah, his kids definitely didn't see the throne after him. Yeah. That's a fact. All right. Um, no, Zedekiah was his uncle because I think Josiah. No, no, Jehoiakim is his son. Is whose son? Is uh, Jehoiakim. I mean, Jehoiah Chin is Jehoiakim's son. Okay. But he got taken out. He got taken out. And then, yeah. So Jehoiakim's brother is Zedekiah. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, and Zedekiah are brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Jehoiah Chin is the son of Jehoiakim. Right. So the last king, when he got taken out, Zedekiah was his uncle because that was Jehoiakim's brother. Right. Yeah. Um, grab a. Uh, well, I guess we might as well read that now, right? Go, uh, let's go to uh, 2 Kings chapter 24. Give me verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 24. Give me verse 8. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months, and his mother's name was Nehushta the daughter of El Nathan of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all his father had done. Mm -hmm. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, the son of Judah, I mean, Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers, and the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign. And he mm -hmm. carried out thence all the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house and cut it in pieces and all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem and all the princes and all the mighty men of valor, even 10,000 captives and all the craftsmen, smiths, none remain except the poorest sort of people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim to Babylon and the king's mother and the king's wives and his officers. And the mighty of the land, those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And all the men of might, even 7,000 and craftsmen and smiths, a thousand all that were strong and apt for war. Even them, the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Madaniah, his father's brother, king instead, in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Right. So he made his uncle the king instead of him. So three months into his reign. That's when that's when Nebuchadnezzar came in there and just started shaking stuff up because the prophecy had to be true that his son couldn't rule over Jerusalem. Right. So now he, he came and started shaking stuff up and he brought everybody out. You know what I'm saying? And started taking the only people that was left with the poor in the land. And he took Jehoiakim, too. Yeah, well he, he spent like some time in jail. But the, I think the king of Babylon brought him out and he ate at his table, I think, after that. I yeah. Think he was good. In Another like, king. Another king. Yeah. Uh, it was Jehoiakim. Who, who was that? No, nah, it was the next king. It was uh evil. Uh, what's his name? Evil. Evil. Evil Moroda. Yeah, evil yeah. Moroda. Yeah, he 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 let Jehoiakim out of jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we'll get to it. That's in the next chapter. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, that was after a while. That was after Nebuchadnezzar died, right? So Nebuchadnezzar at this time is running the show. He already got Ammon, Moabites, Syria. Now he just got uh Israel. He took all our people out. The only people that's there is just the poor people in the land. Then he made Zedekiah over the poor people, right? But all the people that's nice, that had a little bit of money, y'all get y'all butts over here and move you all the way over to Babylon. But let's take a look at what that would look like. You know what I'm saying? Let's put this on the board here. Let's see. I'm going to put this on the board here. So this is kind of what it'll look like. Let me put it on here so y'all can see it online. You know what I mean? So you got, you got us. We was all right here. Let me get my laser pointer here. Let me actually get my pen. We was all right here, right? So then, you know what I'm saying? Israel, the northern kingdom, they got taken years ago into all these different places in Assyria. You know what I'm saying? Here, 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 and here. 
right? And then the king of Assyria at the time took Gentiles from around Babylon, from here, and then put them and replaced our northern tribe brothers, brothers, they put them back over here. So now Gentiles is to the north of us. Years later, under Jehoiakim, that's when the king of Babylon came and he took all of our people and moved us here. Right. To all these different places right here. Right. So you can look. That's a very far distance. Right. So this is the land of Israel right here. But this is thousands of miles. So it's, it's not like, oh, I can just bend the corner and I can get back home. Right. He took us deep, far. Right. We are way over in another land, places that we probably ain't never seen before. We heard of them, but we probably ain't never visited there in our lives. Right. So that's the switcheroo that was done. So now what's left in, is, uh, in Judah is only the poorest people. And you got King Zedekiah. Right. At the same time, you got King Nebuchadnezzar that's ruling over here in Babylon right here. Right. So let's let's learn a little bit more about King uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. Let's go to uh, this is Daniel chapter two. Give me verse one. It's Daniel chapter two, verse one. Before we get that, give me Jeremiah chapter 22. Give me Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 20. And after that, we'll get uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. Twenty-two, verse 1. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 20. Go up to Lebanon and cry and lift up thy voice in Bashan and cry from the passages for all thy lovers are destroyed. I spake unto thee in thy prosper prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear. This hath been thy manner from thy youth that thou obey not my voice. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Truly then shall thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. O inhabitant of Lebanon, that makest thy nest in the cedars, how gracious shall thy be when pangs come upon thee in pains as of a woman in travail. As I live, says the Lord, though Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were a signet upon my right hand. He said yet, Coniah, the from son there. of who? The son of Jehoiakim. Right. So Jehoiakim's son is Je uh, Jehoiachin. Right. But his other name that the Most High God calls him is Coniah. So he's talking about the same one. He's talking about the king that just took over Jehoiachin. Right. But watch it. He said, even if Jehoiachin was my like was a signet ring, I would still pluck him off. So in other words, if he was a back in back in our time. Right. What we used to do is we used to have like a ruler or a king would have a ring. So, you know, how people have a signature now. Instead, you would have a ring and your ring would have a, a special symbol symbol on it. And you would take like wax or whatever. And you press that up against the paper and people would know if your paper got that symbol on it. That means it came from that king's ring. You know what I'm saying? So then if like, like right now you might see, y'all probably too young, but when you get older, you they're going to tell you, uh, give me a copy of your birth certificate. But they want the birth certificate that got a seal on it, right? And it got stamped with something right when you were born. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't got that official seal, they'd be like, that ain't it. Well, that's kind of how the signal, the signet was. They got that from the kings, our kings specifically. We used to have these rings. We would punch it in there. So if I make a law and I'd be like, yo, yo, yo. From now on, when you greet me, you got to say, Mr. Harris, that's law, right? Do you do it? You stamp that thing on there? That's law. Catch somebody saying something other than Mr. Harris. Hey, what's going on, Phil? Bah! Pop them right in their darn face. You know what I'm saying? Because that's law at that point, right? So this is this is what he's talking about. He's like, even if, it, even if he was my signet ring, that's like the most important thing for a king. That's how you know I'm the one talking, right? Even if he was my signet ring, I'd pull it off and throw him off. So the most like God is saying how upset he is with, with Coniah, right? Keep going. Yeah, well, I pluck thee thence, and I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life, and mm -hmm. into the hand of them whose face thou fear, mm -hmm. and even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. And I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bear thee, into another country where ye were not born, and there shall you die. Right? So the most like God now talking about his mama. 
He said, listen, I'm going to cast you out and your mama. And you're going to die in a place where you wasn't born. All right? Keep going. But to the land whereunto they desire to return, there shall they not return. Mm -hmm. Is this man, Coniah, a despised, broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein there is no pleasure? Wherefore are they cast out, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not? O earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, write ye this man childless as a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. All right. So he had to take his line and kill off his line. So he told Jehoiakim the same thing. Like this, this the king is the kingdom is not going to run through your bloodline anymore. So that's why the king of Babylon ended up making his uncle the king. So now the sons of his uncle ends up continuing the bloodline. Right. We're going to talk a little bit more about that bloodline when we get to uh, the Gospels and we're going to trace Yahushua's bloodline back to David through uh, through all the kings that we're talking about. And we're going to see which one it line up with and who it avoids. All right. Keep going. That was it. That was it. Let's go to uh, Daniel chapter two, verse one. This is Daniel chapter two, verse one. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherein his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. And the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to show the king his dreams. Now, listen, you got to make sure you understand what's going on. You got to put all this in perspective. Daniel is an Israelite. Right. He is an Israelite. He was taken out of Judah. That's his land. He was taken by Nebuchadnezzar, the king. Took him. A lot of people got killed. So a lot of Daniel family and friends and people, you know what I'm saying, of his of his same country got killed in this war. Nebuchadnezzar is responsible for these people getting killed. He took Daniel captive and put him in a land that's not his own land. Took a lot of his friends with him, put him in a land that's not his land. Then he told Daniel, you got to eat this. You got to dress like this. You got to do this and you got to do this for years. And then you show up before me and I'm going to tell you whether you approve to talk in front of me or not. Later, he ended up being approved where he could talk in front of him, right? This is Nebuchadnezzar, the captor of his people, the destroyer of his, his nation, right? Meanwhile, Daniel is serving him. Daniel is serving him like that's his king, right? So Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he like, let me call my magician because he got his regulars, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He, he don't really mess with Israelites like that. He don't even know what our customs are. He don't know nothing about our God. He don't know none of that. All he do is, hey, who are the people that do magic that can help me out with my drink? Right? So think of it like, you know what I'm saying? When you see these people go to their horoscopes like, oh, I'm Aquarius. You know what I'm saying? Aquarius life. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, what's the other one? What's the one that's like right now? Sagittarius? Mm -hmm. Capricorn right now? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, Cap I'm a Cap Capricorn. Big cap, cap of corn. <laughs> a cap and a corn. Right? You know what I'm saying? So you doing it and you telling them, you know what I'm saying? Because what they looking at, they looking at, they reading their thing in the morning. Oh, Capricorn, you are going to have a great day today because you're resilient. And all this crazy stuff that they be doing reading that don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? They be, you know what I'm saying? They make up stuff. They be like, yeah, but you a Virgo, so you know you. You know what I'm saying? They try to make it seem like, and they say the same thing about everybody, no matter what sign. Hey, what sign is you? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, what's another one? Give me another one. A Sagittarius. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, I knew you was a Sagittarius, because it's just shut your darn mouth up. I'm an Aquarius. You know what I'm saying? You switch it on. Try it on. Just switch it up on them. Be like, oh, I'm a Sagittarius. Oh, boy, I knew you was a Sagittarius, because y'all always shut up. I'm a darn Aquarius. Why don't you leave me alone? Always making something up. You don't even know nothing about it. At least you can do, if you're going to lie, at least you can do a study to lie. Goodness gracious. You know what I'm saying? Some of these people are real, though. You meet one of the real ones, they're usually white. You know what I'm saying? But you meet one of the real, I was working at Netflix. You know what I'm saying? I was sitting there taking my call, minding my darn business. And then I'm listening to people. She right behind me. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. That's not how it works at all, honey. She pulled out some cards on the desk, on the floor, pulled out the card. I'm like, I thought that was tarot card. She's like, no, 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 no. These have cards as well. You know what I'm saying? She's looking at it. I'm looking. I'm leaning over because I'm scared. I'm like, I don't want to get too into it. You know what I'm saying? Because I was a Christian at the time. I was like, I don't even want to know if that stuff is real or not. And I'm looking. She's breaking it down. She went deeper than anybody. She ain't, she ain't looking. No internet. No nothing. 
she got that stuff from the spirit. She is sitting there like, you know what I'm saying? I was looking like, oh, this lady is creepy. You know what I'm saying? Some of these people get real with this stuff. Some of the stuff we got is just a commercial. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Aquarius.com. You click a button and it just throw something at you. You know what I'm saying? They don't even know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? But these people be looking at the stars. They be looking like, yeah, this is the year of the Aquarius because, you know what I'm saying, these stars make this sign and all this stuff. Some of these people serious about it. All that stuff come from real stuff. You know what I'm saying? They don't know. These, these are the angels. People be thinking it's a joke. These angels these people are talking about. Fallen angels these people are talking about. You know what I'm saying? These young gods. You know what I'm saying? All these other gods these people be talking about. That's where they get that stuff from. They try to get information from them. You know what I'm saying? They come from ancient times where these gods, people will call them aliens today. You know what I'm saying? When people when people be talking about they see aliens and stuff, ain't what they seeing. These people really seeing something, but they ain't aliens. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't aliens the way you think about it, at least. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no green men with three eyes. You know what I'm saying? UFOs these and advanced technology. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nah, these is, these is, these is, uh, these is, uh, you know what I'm saying? Celestial beings. You know what I'm saying? These things is created directly by God that disobeyed them. Came down here. They did it before with Noah. Y'all remember the story with Noah, right? When Noah had the ark, one of the reasons, grab it real quick. This is uh, Genesis chapter six. A lot of people don't even realize this. Genesis chapter six. Uh, uh, what I want, Genesis. Give me, give me Genesis chapter six, verse one. Let me show y'all where these aliens come from. These so-called aliens come from. It's Genesis chapter six, verse one. Um, yeah, Genesis chapter six, verse one. We gonna see. Watch this. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth mm -hmm. and daughters were born unto them, mm -hmm. that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Right. So they said the sons of God, when they say sons of God, it ain't talking about somebody who believe in God. Right. When they say sons of God, it's talking about something that was directly created. When you when you create when you create something, you know what you call them? Your son. Right. When I look, when I got with my wife and we created my boy. My first boy, I was like, I'm going to call him Zahar. Middle name, Kyle. Last name, Mr. Harris. You know what I'm talking about? You know, that's law, sickness. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Harris. Right? And then I said, that's my son. So when you create something, that's your son. When the Most High God directly created all of what we call angels, that was his sons. Those are all sons. Right? So the sons of God did what? Saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. That's what people think is it. You got stuff that come from above, that ain't from this world, coming down here, and they slept with these women. And then what happened? What happened after they slept with women? They had regular people, people just like you and me, huh? There what were, kind of people they have? There were they had giants, boy. They were giants. them boys jumping out. So you know when they digging stuff up right now, they were like, oh, we evolved. They they try to tell us that we evolved. This is what they want us to believe. They want us to believe that at some time, billions of years ago, you know that because you smart. You got a four-point Darno. Look, hit but smart. He know they ain't taught him all this stuff. Billions of years ago, right? We were just tadpoles. You know what I'm saying? Just little tadpoles. And then all of a sudden, we start mutating and changing and evolving until billions of years later, guess what we turned into? Little monkeys. You know what I'm saying? We were little monkeys. And then we took a couple steps and then we turned into medium sized monkeys. You know what I'm saying? Then we took a couple more steps. Y'all see the picture? It started off a little monkey like that. You know what I'm saying? Then he take a couple steps. He take like one step. Then he like, he straightened out a little bit, but he's still a monkey. Then he take another step. Then he like a, he like planted an ape monkey. Like, oh, this is a smart monkey there. You know what I'm saying? So he's a smart monkey like that. And then he take another step. Then he a black guy. You know what I'm saying? Then you take another step and he white with a suit on. I'm like, y'all gotta be, you gotta be darn kidding me. These people are flagrant. They ain't lost their darn mind. Right? But that's what they try to teach us. They try to teach us that black people are the, the, the under-evolved state of white people. That's how white people try to make themselves look better than us. Right? So they taught us that we evolved from monkeys and black people are the more primitive version of white people. So they can look at us and be like, Couple couple million years, you guys would be what we right. You just have a little bit more evolving to do. That's why they're so crazy. Ain't got nothing to do with them putting crack in our hood. And them ain't got nothing to do with them putting a whole bunch of lead in our neighborhood. You know what lead do to people? 
If you take lead and expose yourself to lead and just rub it all over you and just do that for days, guess what you gonna want to do? You gonna be out here one night. Yeah, yeah. Just fight people for no reason. If you go back to my mama, my dad, and before they time, they was always fighting. Always. You go back to the movies. You ever seen the uh, what they call them? What they call them? What they call the white folks? You know what I'm saying? In New York, used to run around with the gangs with the chains, beat each other up. The Aryans, or something? not the Aryans, the uh, the greasers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The greasers and all that. They used to fight. That stuff was real because they just used to fight. Everybody used to fight. So when the white folks noticed that, oh, everybody fight. You know what they did? They took gasoline. You know what gasoline had in it back in the day? Lead. Right? They took gasoline. They said, no, take lead out of everything. So now when you go to gas station, what you see at the pump? Unleaded. Unleaded. Because they had to take the lead out of the gasoline because they knew if they left it in there, that's exposing all these white folks to this. But now if you go to you from Michigan, right? If you go to Flint, and it's not just Flint. It's Flint. It's uh, Louisiana or somewhere. Louisiana got a bunch of them. It's uh, it's uh, it's a place in Mississippi. Um, it's uh, oh, it's water. it's all over the world. All the blackest places. If you go to them. It's a bunch of lead in their pipes, a bunch of lead in their water. And for some reason, even here, right, they still trying to fix it. But it's lead over here where I live right now. We we live where historically is where the black people were. It's lead right here. Any place that is historically black, they left the lead. And they got the nerves to come back to us because we under evolved and lock us up, put us in jail and say, why is the crime rate so high? You put crack in our hoods and you left lead in our hoods. And that's just the that's just the bottom of what y'all did to us. And then try to pretend like, oh, we had no idea. Why don't you guys just pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Right? These people play dirty games with us. Dirty, 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 dirty games with us. And they bet on us not understanding it. They bet on us not getting it. Right? But that's what they do. They lie to us. They try to tell us we evolved. Ain't nobody evolved. When they digging up stuff and they seeing them monkeys and they seeing this stuff and they seeing what they call Neanderthals, what they actually digging up is giants. Right? They getting bones of giants. And because they look at it and they like, this ain't no normal human structure. Let's make something up. That's what scientists do. What is science? Who knows what science is? What's science? Can she answer, please? What type of stuff is that? Sorry, right, I got your back. You ain't got to worry about it. Why are you still talking? This is, but look, that's the problem with boys. You gonna you gonna understand? They always want to talk. They always want the attention. He been sitting there quiet the whole time. As soon as it's your chance to get a little attention, what he do? Oh, but they all right. No, but I'm gonna put what it Okay, wait, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. So tell me what science is, please. That's absolutely right. Right? She said science is like when you do stuff with experiments. And if you don't get it right, then it's wrong. That is exactly what science is. Right? Because what they do is they look at something and they make a hypothesis. Right? A hypothesis is going to be your, what they teach us. is an educated guess. Right? So you look at something and you be like, okay, I believe that if you rub two rocks together, It'll create a magnetic force. If I just keep rugging two rocks, it'll create a magnetic force. That's my guess. That's my educated guess. So then what am I have to do? I have to do an experiment. And I got to see if it's right or if it's wrong, right? So I take two rocks because I'm experimenting. I rub them together, right? No magnetic force. So I'm wrong. That's, that proves that rubbing two rocks together does not create a magnetic force. So I write that down. And that becomes my scientific observation, right? That is what science is about. You, you see, you make a guess, you test the guess, and you have an observation about what you, what you tested, right? So when these people get to telling you about what we evolved from, what you have to ask them is, when did you observe it, test it, and make an observation of it? Because these people ain't never seen a Big Bang. They ain't never seen no monkey turn into a white man. <laughs> it's just never happened. Like you can't, you can't show me. You got the, you got the little monkey. You know what I'm saying? You got the little monkey that walk around the first step. 
And then you got the white man at the end of the step. And we can, we can go find us a little monkey. And we can go find us plenty of white men. Why can't I ever find the planet of the ape monkey? Like, that's the one I'm looking for. I want to see him. Like, where the, where the monkey with good posture, but he hairy all over? You can't find them. The Chupacabra or Bigfoot. <laughs> you can't find them because they make this stuff up. All this stuff is just guesses that they make. It's fine to make guesses, but now you have for it to be science. Now you got to test it. You got to recreate it, and you got to make an observation. If you can't do that, shut your darn mouth. You can't tell me I can't believe in my book if you making up something in your book. If you telling us we've been here billions and billions of years, I'm supposed to just go with that. We, we've been here billions and billions of years. I'm supposed to just, right, okay. How do you prove it? Well, because I took a carbon molecule off of this, this rock, and then I multiplied it by half of its life that I made an assumption of what its life was, and then kept doing that until I came up with my number. That don't even make good sense. But what they say it to us, guess what? It sounds so good. We read it in our book. That thing sounds so good. We be looking at like, dang, that make a lot of these people are geniuses. They're not. These people don't even be that smart. If you sit and talk to these people that write these books, they're not that smart. They're not that smart. They know how to use big words. They know how to over talk you. They know how to down talk you. But these people are not that smart. Right? Don't ever be scared of thinking for yourselves. Even if you're wrong, don't be scared to be wrong. Just make sure you get right. You know what I'm saying? But don't, don't be afraid. Just because somebody might might make you wrong. Okay, that's fine. You wrong, you learn something new. But don't ever get afraid. To, don't ever get afraid just because something written in a book. You know what I'm saying? To think of yourself. These people be lying to you every day in these books. You know how they tell you, read a book. You know why they tell you to read a book? Because it's easier to indoctrinate you in the book. Not saying don't read the book. You should read the book. That's fine. But when you read a book, be on guard. Because the same lie that's going to come from the book is the same lie that'll come from YouTube. Right? You got to check everything. Everybody lying. Everybody lying. That's how you, your mindset got to be, every, including me. Everybody lying. That's what your mindset got to be. And then from there, don't be lazy. Don't just say everybody lying, so who cares? Uh, you know, I'm just going to do what I think is best. No, don't be lazy. Everybody lying. Let me figure out what the truth. So now you got to test. Okay, Uncle Phil said this. Let me figure it out. My teacher said this. Let me look behind it. You got to test everything. You do that, man. Can't nobody, man. Can't nobody mess with y'all out here, man. All the information y'all got at y'all fingertips, please. I'll be a bad boy if I grow up with this information in my fingertips. Boy, I'll be out here. I'll be. Huh? What information? Why you can't play basketball then? Oh. <laughs> so listen, this is uh, what we is that? Daniel two. This is Daniel chapter two, verse what one? Verse one, yeah. This is Daniel chapter two, verse one. Watch the book say. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Mm -hmm. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans to show the king his dreams. Right. So, they, so he called the Chaldeans. That's 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 the king of Babylon's people. His people are called Chaldeans. So he called his own people like, you know what I'm saying? Come tell me what this dream means. You all right, baby girl? So they came and stood at the stood before the king and the king said unto them i have dreamed a dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream uh-huh then spake the chaldeans to the king in syriac right so he spoke to them in their language watch what they said to him O king live forever he said look O king live forever that's how you show respect to a king that's like a that was like a saying you know what i'm saying like, O king live forever watch this tell thy servants the dream and we will show the interpretation look if you tell me what the dream is look if you got a dream right Jaden got a dream Jaden. His dream, it troubled you, scared you. You ever had a dream that was just like, man, that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So he had a crazy dream, but he didn't know what it meant. And he know, he know that he can go to somebody and learn what the dream is. So he turned to TJ. TJ, you be knowing what dreams mean sometimes, right? What would TJ say after that? You had a dream. You don't know what his dream was, but sometimes you do be knowing what the dream is. What's your next step? What would your next step be, baby? Um, I would go to sleep. I can't buy good help around here. I can't buy good help. You might want to know what the dream is. You might want to know what the dream is, right? 
You gonna be sitting there. You gonna be looking like, okay, you had a dream. Okay, I can I can help out with your dream, but uh, tell me what the dream is, right? Watch what the king do though. So he did. They that's what they told him. They said, "King, live forever." Go ahead and tell us the dream, and we'll tell you what the interpretation is. Watch the king. And the king answered and said to the Chalde Chaldeans, "The thing is gone from me. If you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof." You shall be cut in pieces and your house houses shall be made a dung hill. Right? So now listen. Whoever had a dream and they forgot it. I be forgetting all my dreams. They be cracking dreams too. I, I know that it was cracking, but I can't remember what the dream was. Wait, 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 wait. But that's what I mean though. But I be knowing though. I be feeling. I be remembering like whatever it was. I know it was fly. Like we was in there. Whatever was happening. It was good. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. I can't for the life of me remember what it was. So that's what Nebuchadnezzar was going. He was like, man, I know I had a bad dream. That thing was crazy. But it's gone for me is what he said. But then he came back to his magician. This is how you know he didn't trust his magicians. He came back to his magician. He said, and if you don't tell me what my dream was, I'm going to do what? You shall be cut in pieces and your house is made of dunghill. And your house is going to be made a dung hill. Poop. That, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you throw a whole bunch of trash and poop and waste like and make a hill because it's stacking up. That's what their house is. So think of it. You ever you ever drove past the, the garbage, the garbage place right up the street here? You know what I'm saying? And they got big old, big old hills of garbage. That's a, that's like a dung hill. You know what I'm saying? You got poop and all types of stuff in there. Just, just You know what I'm saying? Just hills of garbage. So he said, that's what your house is going to be made, a dunk hill, and I'm going to chop you up in pieces. So you got to look at it from his magician's point of view. From the magician's point of view, it's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not only do you want me to interpret and tell you what your dream means, but now you say you forgot your dream, and I got to tell you what your dream was and tell you what it means? They got to look at that like, oh, that's crazy. But now they under threat. If we don't do it, then we going to die. So imagine how they feel. How do you think they feel? Warm and fuzzy? No, they panic. They look like, oh, we all about to die. He about to chop us all up. The king had a bad dream. He tripping again today. And they know Nebuchadnezzar crazy, right? Nebuchadnezzar ain't no joke. He'll do exactly what he's talking about. He'll do it, right? Keep going. Watch this. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. And they answered again and said, let the king tell his servants the dream and we'll show the interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. And the king answered and said, I know of certainty that you would gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me to the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. Right. So he said. Y'all going to take advantage of it because I don't know the dream. I forgot. So if I try to make something up and tell y'all, y'all just going to tell me whatever I want to hear and make up a lie. He said, I already know that's how it is. So in other words, tell me the dream and then I know that your interpretation is real. Let's see. D-boy panicking right now. And the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician. Or astrologer or Chaldean. They looking like, man, we ain't never been asked no stuff like this. Hey, like, that's crazy. You want us to tell you what your dream was and tell you what it means? That's crazy. Watch this. And it, and it is a rare thing that the king requires. And there is none other than that can show it to thee before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. <laughs> right? He said the only people that can help you out are the gods. Right? And the gods, they don't live with us. They don't talk to us like that. Right. Watch this. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Right. So now all the wise men get slain. But guess who's a part of that group? Daniel and the brethren. Right. So watch this. And Daniel answered with counsel and with wisdom. To Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon, he answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Right. So then after Daniel heard that everybody about to die, you know what I'm saying? Daniel was like, 
Oh, he's serious. He about to do that. So hold on. Why he moving so quick with killing everybody? And then they explained it to him like, look, man, he had a bad dream. He be tripping when he have a bad dream, but we ain't never seen him trip like this. No, I'm telling you, he talking about he forgot his dream. Now he want us to tell him what the dream is and then tell him what the dream mean. He feel like we all just won't lie if he try to tell us what the dream is. So now we all got to die because of this. He trying to kill us all. I don't know what we going to do. So Daniel was like, all right, look, let me go talk to him. So Daniel go in and talk to the king. And he like, listen, just give me a little bit more time. And I will tell you what the dream is. Right? Let's see how the king responds. Then Daniel went to his house and made the king, made the thing known to Hanani, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. And they, and they would desire mercies of God of heaven concerning the secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Right? So they start praying to the Most High God. And they pray to the Most High God like, listen, man. I don't know how we're going to handle this situation, but help us out in this because we all about to die and we don't feel like we should die over these people's foolishness. Remember, they in the land of their captivity, right? He like, man, we about to die over these people's foolishness. I'm trying to figure out how we get wrapped into this stuff. So watch this. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Right? So now Daniel was given the dream. Right? So after Dan, he woke up. He was like, that's the dream. That's the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Right? So he prayed about it. Most High God gave him that very dream. And after that, he blessed the Most High God. Like, oh, thank you. Because he's looking like, I thought we were about to die out here in these streets. So he looked like, oh, thank you, the Most High God. Watch this. Boom. Keep going. And Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and set up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals so the he gives wisdom unto who? Wisdom unto the wise. So how do you get wisdom? Fear the Lord. You got to be wise. He said, I give wisdom unto the wise. You remember the parable that Yahushua had? And Yahushua said, look, I gave, I gave this man one. I gave one talent. I gave this man, I think it's five talents. And I gave this man 10 talents. Right. And the one that had 10 talents, he went out and he turned it into 20, I think. And the one that had five turned it into 10. And then the one that had one just kept it. And at the end, and at the end of the parable, Yahushua said to those who have, I give more. Right. But to those who have not even what they have, I take it away. This is how the most high God works. Right. When you the beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yahuwah. Right. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of Yahuwah. Fear. Some people are trying to tell you, no, fear is not fear. It's just rever. No, no, no. The beginning is being scared. Right. It's a feeling that you get like, man, God is going to kill me over this. I'm going to go to hell over this. God is going to punish me over this. That is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom is only being able to separate right from wrong, being able to see the difference. Wisdom is not necessarily doing right or wrong. Wisdom is being able to separate it and say, okay, this is right. Who is the wisest person in our book? Help him out, T. Solomon. King Solomon. Wisest person. Right? At the end of his life, how many wives did he have? Like 600. That boy had about 700 wives mm -hmm. and 300 con concubines. That's a G-ball on him. Back in the day, we would have said, oh, he got them all. You know what I'm saying? All of them, like from all different countries. You know what I'm saying? What they call them now? Za? You know what I'm saying? The exotic ones, don't they call them Za? Ain't that what it is? They call them Za. They call them Za. That's what they call them. Well, man might want to give up and try to be cool. <laughs> See, I'm cooler than y'all. Y'all not, not caught up to me. That's what it is. I'll teach y'all something when I get off. You know what I'm saying? My next day off or something, I'll put y'all in a little class on cool. You know what I'm saying? So he had them all, right? But he was wise. He didn't choose to do right with his wisdom, but he was wise. And because he had wisdom, he asked the most high God for wisdom, right? To be able to ask for that, you have to already know. You have to already be wise to ask. He asked God, just give me wisdom and understanding to rule your people. To be able to ask for that, you have to already be wise. So that's why the most high God said, I give wisdom to the wise. If you want to be wise, if you want wisdom, you have to be wise enough to ask for wisdom. 
from the most high God. So he said, I give wisdom to the wise and he gives knowledge to who? To them that know and understand. So you have to already know and understand for the most high God to give you knowledge. This is the conundrum of the book, right? There's a little bit that you got to get on your own. In every situation, you got to get your butt up. You got to actually focus. You got to actually discipline. You got to actually do it, right? Once you do the little bit, the most high God take what you have and give you more. It is only when we have something, because the most high God started us off with something, and we do nothing with it. When we do nothing with it, then even what we have, he takes away. So we get a little bit of wisdom. That's what we born with. Then guess what? We act stupid. We make bad choices. We don't fear the most high God. Then he take that wisdom away from us. He take that knowledge away from us. <laughs> then we walk around our life scared or, or sad or mad or angry or or sometimes we think we got it. We think we smart. We think we sharp. We think we doing all this stuff. It don't make no sense like these scientists or they think they smart as all outdoor. Oh, we'll see the exotopes and the isotopes are the esteropes. And you know, all these were like, I don't know what none of this stuff mean. These people be trying to talk Bible with you. Talking about, well, the the mosaic and the noetic law is uh, this, that, and it's like, what is all these words that y'all talking about? But don't know a lick of the word. They went to seminary for years, don't know a lick of the word. They they got they got masters and doctor degrees, don't know a lick of science, real science, right? But they learned what they learned. We be thinking we got something, but because we don't got something, even what we had, the most high God take away from us, right? So he gives wisdom to the wise and he gives knowledge to those who know and understand. Very important to understand what that means, right? Keep going, though. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is the darkness and the light, dwe and the light dwells with him. Mm -hmm. I thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we, what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore, Daniel went into Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. Look, Arioch was ready to kill these boys. Arioch over there sharpening his sword. He looked like, man, I like these boys, but king said, I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? He polishing that thing, ain't thing, getting it nice and ready to chop these boys' head off. Then Daniel went into him. Arioch like, man, I don't like CP. You know what I'm saying? You imagine Arioch. I don't even like looking at y'all before I kill y'all, man. What, what you want, man? What's going on? Y'all got a couple more days. Go ahead and tell me something. Right. So he went to Arioch and what did he tell him? Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. <laughs> Look, Daniel in there. I like to imagine Daniel panicking. <laughs> Don't kill the wise men of Babylon. Watch this. Bring me in before the king and I will show unto the king the interpretation. OK. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him. I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king's interpretation. Mm hmm. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name is Belteshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? And Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. Look, so look, Daniel, quick, he hated all the rest of them, quick too. You know what I'm saying? He, for, King ain't even asked him that question. King asked him like, oh, you coming here to show me what the thing is? Daniel popped right out. Well, you know what I'm saying? Your wise men, your boy, you know what I'm saying? It's impossible for them to do this. You know what I'm talking about? Because he got to separate. Look, he has to separate himself. That's, our, that's, that's what our calling is. We can't be walking in with these other people making it look like we the same as them. That's not what we do. We have to separate. Now, people don't like that. You got to understand, people don't like people going to look at you. They're going to be like, oh, you think you better. You think you above us. Oh, you a nerd. Are you a, they going to do whatever, right, to make your separation uncool, right? But the most high God calls us to separate ourselves, right? So the first thing he do is separate himself. Oh, well, uh, the king ain't even asked him that question. King got, what the king asked him? Watch this. Are thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Right. He asked Daniel, are you able to make known the dream that I've seen? Are you able to tell me the dream that I, I had and at the same time, tell me what it means? That's what he asked Daniel. Watch Daniel's reply. The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers and the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king. <laughs> your boys, they can't do this. What I'm about to do, your boys can't do what I'm telling you. He, just, he pooped on them. He just hated on all of them and then separated himself but watch what he do but there is a god in heaven that reveals secrets and makes known to the king nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days so you see why he had to separate 
He had to let them know these boys can't do it, but my God can. Right. So he separated himself from them and then gave the glory that he would have gotten because everybody would look at him like, dang, Daniel know how to read dreams and tell you what the dream was. He was like, no, 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 no. My God can do this for you. Right. So then he gave glory to the most high God. Watch this. Thy dream and the visions of thy head uh, of thy head upon thy bed are these. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that reveals secrets makes known to thee what shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. But as for me. So what he's telling me is like your dream is about the future is what he's telling them pretty much. Right. Keep going. But as for me, the secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king. And that thou might know the thoughts of thy heart. Right. So in other words, he's saying the reason why I got the dream and I got the interpretation is not because I'm so great and I'm so wise. But he the most I got is giving it to us for our sake that we don't get killed. And for what else? What was the second piece for their sake? And, and that you might know the thoughts of thine heart. And so that in that and that the king might understand what he's talking about. Right. Might understand the dream that he had. Those are the two purposes that he got from God. For why he can tell him this dream. Watch this. Keep going. You, O king, saw and behold a great image. This great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of the fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, and his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part iron and part clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron clay, and brake them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, the gold broken in pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. All right. So this is what he saw in his dream. This is kind of like a, a, a visual description of what he saw in his dream. Gold head. You know what I'm saying? He had the silver chest. The bronze, you know what I'm saying, belly. You know what I'm saying? I think gonna go down. <laughs> and then at the very bottom, he had the feet that's mixed with iron and clay. Right? This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Hold on. What happened to the feet? Did it say right there? Uh, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Right. So then you had a stone that ended up th that smote. You know what I'm saying? The image. So watch this. This is the second part of his dream. Right. You got the gold head. The silver, you know what I'm saying, and the bronze, and you have the feet that's mixed with iron and clay. All this stuff means something, right? All of it means something. Daniel's about to kind of give us, a, he's about to reveal a little bit of what it means to us, and then we're going to kind of, you know what I'm saying, kind of keep this same theme throughout the book of Daniel and even on to Revelations when we get there. Right. Now watch what happened. <coughs> oh, I got the wrong one, huh? Let me see. Thighs were of brass. His legs of iron and his feet was iron and clay. I don't know. It's supposed to be another one that got a. Uh, that got a. Uh, I must have put the same one on there twice. It's supposed to be another one that. Uh, that got a rock that come off. But anyways, the there was a uh, there's a rock that came and it hit him and crushed him. Right. That's what he saw in his dream. Right. He didn't remember the dream. Daniel just reminded him of the whole dream. Now watch what now watch the response. Thou, O king, are king of kings. 
For the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. Right? So he's telling them what it means. He's saying, listen, you are the king of what? Kings. Remember, remember this language. Who else is called king of kings? Yahushua. Yahushua is called king of kings, right? So he's telling Nebuchadnezzar, the enemy, the op, <laughs> right? You, <laughs> you are king of kings, right? Right after you just got done digging out all my homeboys, right? And pulling them out and bringing them here and taking over our temple and stealing stuff out of it. And you killed my king, right? You, sir, are the king of kings. He got to tell him this. How do you think that make him feel? Like you killed some of my family. You killed some of my people. But most like God told me, I got to tell you, you're the king of kings. He got to eat that, right? Keep going. Watch this. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, has he given into your hand and has made thee ruler over them all. Right? You, Even the animals, he said, you are the ruler of everything. One thing about Nebuchadnezzar, you seen them, you seen them, them, them kings that they got the elephants and all that. You know what I'm saying? They be riding the elephants, you know what I'm saying, and all that, and all they warriors. Whoever seen 300? Y'all seen 300, right? Y'all ain't never seen 300? Oh, goodness gracious. You gotta watch 300. So 300 is about Xerxes. We're gonna read about him too. You know what I'm saying? But he came after Nebuchadnezzar. You know what I'm saying? But he took over all these white folks, all the Greeks, and you know what I'm saying, all them people. He took over all them. And he did it with elephants. He used to ride. He had all the people riding big old elephants. And what you think you're going to do? You on a horse with a bow and a darn arrow. You know what I'm talking about? And then somebody pull up on a darn elephant. That's like trying to take your little darn Prius up against like a real Hummer. Not to like not the new Hummers. I know y'all. I'm talking about the real, the, the Hummers that the military be in. Them big, wide, take up two lanes. You know what I'm saying? Them thing big and wide. You up against that Hummer or a tank. You know what I'm saying? You up against a tank. You got your little Prius. All right, you better get out of my way, buddy. You know what I'm saying? You ride me, you know what I'm saying? That thing a crush running right over you. That's how the elephant was. So you riding around the elephant, big old tusk. That thing come and smack you with the darn trunk, lift your darn butt up, impale you. That thing go right through you sitting there. And it ain't stopped. You just still riding. He don't even know you on. He don't even know you hanging off his, his elephant bumper. You know what I'm saying? You just sitting there riding. He got his bow and arrow. His hit different though. Because he on top of an elephant. You on, you on your little horse and you trying to shoot up to somebody on the elephant. Right? He on the elephant. He shooting down. Who you think get a better shot? That boy about to pop your butt. Bow. Got him. Bow. Got him. Bow. Got him. Bow. Then he go good. And if he miss you, then he going to have the elephant hit you with one of these and a little thing going to get you. And he going to be hanging on there just like rotisserie darn chicken. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting on there. Now he got to clean it off. That's how these boys were getting down back then. It was crazy. Like we soft nowadays. We can't see the like me. If I see some blood. I'll be like, mm -hmm. but that's common practice. Remember, we used to kill animals and just that's how we ate. Like we ate because I slaughtered my own animal most of the time. Right. So our mindset was different. The, the level of violence that we would take it to back in the day was different. <laughs> right. Now, somebody, you know, what I'm saying? I remember I, I used to fight and hit somebody be leaking in the nose. And I'd be like, Ooh, OK, fight over. You know what I'm saying? Like, we good. Now, now, come on, but I won. We ain't got to keep fighting. I ain't trying to touch your blood. That's nasty. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to touch nobody's blood. I don't <coughs> like seeing blood. Right? But it's like back then, that thing was common practice. You know what I'm saying? I see blood every day when I get home. Yeah, all right. Let's rip this. Take the rib cage. Yep. Nip that another. Wrap it up. So your mind was already conditioned. So people used to do nasty, dirty stuff to people back then. That was commonplace for war. And Xerxes used to get it. Well, Nebuchadnezzar used to do the same thing. He used to have even animals listening to him. He'd have animals, lions and tigers fighting with him in wars, training them to fight with him in wars. Right? Because that's 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 what the Most High God gave to him. Most High God said, even the beast of the field is going to obey you. You the king of all kings. You the top of the top. So he tried to tell him what this dream means. Watch this. Keep going. You are this head of gold. He said, you're the head of gold. You the top of the top. You the king of kings. So that's what that first top head means. It's talking about your butt, right? Keep going. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee mm -hmm. and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Right? So then the next king that come or the next kingdom. So when they say kingdom, think of empire, right? So it's his empire first. After his empire, the next empire that's going to come is going to be inferior. In other words, it's going to be a little, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going to be as cracking as you. So that's why it started off with gold. Then the next, the next one was what? Silver. 
Silver. Because gold is better than silver. Right? Then the next one was what? In the third kingdom of brass. Then you got brass. Right? Gold is better than silver. And silver is better than brass. Right? So he's saying the kingdom is going to get, you know what I'm saying, weaker and weaker. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody going to touch what you were doing out there. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to come after you. Watch this. Which shall bear rule over all the earth. Mm -hmm. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. Mm -hmm. at, for as much as iron breaks in pieces and subdues all things. And as iron that breaks all things, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Mm -hmm. And whereas thou saw the feet and the toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou saw the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, brass, the clay, and the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and that the dream is certain and in, in, its, in the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. And the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is God of gods and Lord of kings and a reveler, a revealer of secrets, seeing thou could reveal this secret. All right. So now Nebuchadnezzar give glory because after he heard the interpretation, you know, that probably made him. You got to think about it. That had to feel good. I'm the king of kings. You mean I was the go? I was the go ahead. You know what? Now your God, your God know what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, Daniel's God. That's the God. That's the God of God. So he started giving glory to the Most High God because he's looking like I'm. I'm. I'm the head. I'm the golden head. I'm the man. And after me, it's gonna be somebody else. So we are gonna look at the kingdoms that came after him, right? It's gonna be the kingdom of Medes, Persians, right? You're going to have Greeks that come after that. Then you're going to have Romans, right? So that's going to be the silver, the brass, right? The iron and the iron mixed with clay, right? Those are the four empires that come after this in history, right? And we're going to look at those as we go on and we're going to see how it go. But it says in the days of the iron mixed with clay, a kingdom is going to be established. That was the rock. That was the rock that come and break all that stuff up. It's the kingdom that gonna be, that's going to be established. So the kingdom that was established during the time of the Romans was what? Uh, Yahushua. Yahushua came at the time of the Romans. Remember, uh -huh. it was the Romans that exiled us out of our land. Right? That happened right after Yahushua was put to death or a little bit after Yahushua was put to death. Right? So that is the kingdom. When Yahushua was born and he went up to the right hand of the Father, that is the kingdom being established forever. So when you read this, anybody who would have read this would interpret that as, okay, Whatever that last empire is, that's when the Messiah is going to come and take over. That's why when Yahushua was walking around, we were looking at it like, all right, it must be time to go. You ready to fight? And we looking at Yahushua like, bro, you don't look like you ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, it looked like you not here for the scraps. You know what I'm saying? So, like, what are we doing? Because we didn't understand how the prophecy worked. It didn't make it clear to us that Yahushua was going to come. He going to die. Go up to the right hand of the father for years and years and years and then come back and then be ready to fight. We didn't we ain't never read nothing that say exactly that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's cryptic. You got to you got to really know some scripture to figure that part out. The way it sound to us is the man going to come during the time of the Romans and, and knock some stuff off. So that's what we were ready for. That's why a lot of people didn't accept Yahushua because they were looking at him like, man, I thought I thought the Messiah was supposed to come and take over and conquer lands just like what we seeing now. We thought the Messiah was supposed to be just like Nebuchadnezzar. We oh. thought the Messiah was supposed to be like, yo, 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 playing bully ball with these boys. Like, yo, that's your nation? I give you two options. You can make peace with me and serve me, or I can come take that whole thing over. What you want to do? Like, that's what we thought our Messiah was going to be like. But he came back, and he had just, you know what I'm saying, he just had a smart mouth. You know what I'm saying? He is super wise, knew everything, always talking about God. We were looking like, mm, I don't know if that's the one. Right. But this is part of the reason that we didn't know, because we're looking at this this prophecy. That's the end of it.
No. Keep going. Watch it. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. And Daniel requested of the king that he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Right. So now let's still put all this stuff in context. Nebuchadnezzar at this same time of praising Yah uh, praising Yahushua for the for the prophecy that he just got is still attacking the land. Right. Every now and again, he's still sending troops over there to <sighs> shake them boys down anytime anybody ain't listening. And he get it. But now think about his mindset. His mindset is, well, your God gave this to me. That's what Daniel told me. He told me I'm the king of king, the go ahead. So now he even more emboldened to kill our people. Right. And that's what he continues to do. He continues to get a uh, uh, Jehoiachin. Zedekiah. He, has Zedekiah. he ain't at Zedekiah yet. You know what I'm saying? So right now, Jeho Jeho uh, Jehoiachin is uh, still ruling. Right. So he's continuing to get it, get it him. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually, you know what I'm saying? About the eighth year, he ended up taking Jehoiachin and then Jeho Jehoiachin get moved out. You know what I'm saying? But he fighting them first. He fighting them to get in. You know what I'm saying? Everybody fighting back. And then Jehoiachin get moved out. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to continue on and we're going to kind of look at some of the other stuff that 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 Daniel did, uh, especially with Nebuchadnezzar. Because Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel, just like he did, he made he made Daniel a ruler over Babylon, the city of Babylon. Right. So he made him a ru ruler over that area. You know what I'm saying? Think about that like that. Like he a Hebrew, he an Israelite. He's a captive. He thinks so much of them, like, even though you're a captive, I want you to rule my people. How do you think the people felt about that? They looking at that like, man, don't put this scum above us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ruled them. We took over them. How you, you know what I'm saying? How you put this scum above, above us? That's the same way they feel about our people when we get, like, a high position. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get promoted in my job. These people, that, I look, listen, I look at these people, sometimes sit across these white folks and get to talking to them. You can tell they ain't never had nobody black talk to them with no authority. They don't like it. Right? They be looking like, man, don't put this scum over me. This slick talking Negro, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what you know what I'm saying. He probably lying to y'all. That's how that's how they think of me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like every room I walk into, when I meet somebody new, oh, you know what I'm saying? I gotta prove everything. Well, how do you know this is gonna happen? How you know they don't they don't give me the trust right off the bat? I gotta prove it all. Like I like, you know what I'm saying, I'll show y'all how it works. You know what I'm saying? And I can't be too cocky with it, because if I'm too cocky, you arrogant Negro. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know, you got you to gotta take it easy. You know what I'm saying? You got to patiently go walk through everything, make make gain they trust, and then you move on. Well, that's what Daniel just did. Daniel was patient with what he was doing. He ended up gaining the trust of, of Nebuchadnezzar, and Nebuchadnezzar put him in a high position. But the, the key is, this is the same time that Nebuchadnezzar is killing his people. How do you think his people look at that? Not too bad, bro. Right. Our people today would call our people today would call Daniel a, a house Negro. We would call Daniel. We would call Daniel a uh, coon. Right. That's what a lot of our people would call him. So we have to understand what this looks like when the most high God is doing something. We have to understand what it looked like. A lot of times what people don't understand that the most high God will never have you go against authority. If you want to know. If somebody is for the most high God and not for, for not for the most high God, look at how they deal with authority. Right? Mm. He's never gonna have you fighting and, and trying to and trying to get at authority and all this stuff. Right? It's gonna look a lot more like Dr. King than it would look like Malcolm X, for example. Even though Malcolm X was, you know what I'm saying, kind of all talk. You know what I'm saying? That boy, he ain't really bust a whole lot of grapes. You know what I'm saying? He just talked a lot. You know what I'm saying? So it might, it might look a little bit like, like Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? But it's going to look a lot, lot more like peaceful, subservient, right? It's going to look like a house Negro, right? Because Moses, did Moses, did Moses protest? How about, did Moses, did Moses uh, pick up his bow and arrow, pick up his sword? <laughs> no, nah, Moses went to the, Moses went right to the, right to the uh, Pharaoh and he said, listen. You know, you cocky, bro, Phil. I do be cocky a little bit. Y'all got, you know what I'm saying? Because these white folk can't talk to me any kind of way. I don't like that. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody, like, we all people. You got to treat me as such. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, I'm smart. You smart. Let's just treat each other with respect. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you know what I'm saying? Treat me any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't fair, ain't it? It ain't fair, right? So anyway, uh, what was I saying? 
don't know. Oh, Moses. Moses, <laughs> Moses, <clears throat> Moses walked up to Pharaoh and Moses just told him the most high God said X, Y, and Z. And if you don't, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. Pharaoh say, get your butt out of my face. What Moses do? I ain't kicking and screaming. All right, I'm getting out of your face. Right, that's it. Walk away. Let God fight the battle. And what happened eventually? Pharaoh said, let they butt go. That's what a man of God looks like. It's important that we know how to separate what a man of God look like. Listen, you're going to see, like, if, if I'm putting that situation, if I'm putting Daniel's situation, I might not behave like Daniel. I'm telling y'all the truth. Like, that's, that's tough business to sit there. I know you're killing my people and you want me to help you out with a dream? Like, are you out of your darn mind? <laughs> you want me to help you when you killing my people? Like, my mama lived there. What if she was there? You might have killed my mama. Are you kidding me? You want me to help you out with a drink? Well, you lost your darn mind. I, it would be difficult. That's a, hard, that's a hard ask, right? But nevertheless, that is the strength of a, of a man of God. That is what we're looking for. So separate it. No, if you see these boys fighting the system and Joe Biden is this and Trump is this and I never vote for all that stuff, that's cool. They say whatever they want to say, but that probably ain't going to be the prophet that lead us out of here, Right? If you ever get a prophet and say, you look, rally the troops. We about to march on the Capitol and take over. You know what I'm saying? We're going to take over the White House or something like that in the name of the most high God. You ever see some stuff like that? Just know, nah, don't. Them ain't the ones. Them ain't the ones, right? The most high God is always going to work through the man of God that sit there and be like, I do exactly what you say. But I want you to know the most high God said X, Y, and Z. That's it. And most high God is always going to be the one to do the work. He's going to always be the one to bring these people to their knees. He's going to always bring, be the one to make them apologize to us or to make them think, make things right. All we got to do is wait. And in, the, in the process of waiting, sometimes we'd be looking like, man, is this even real? I'm doing all this waiting. Is it even real? We've been waiting. My grandma was waiting. My great-grandma was waiting. My grand-grandpa -grand was waiting. Is this stuff even real? And then we got to recalibrate ourselves. We look at it like, if what the books say, I'm rolling with it or decide not to, right? Everybody got a choice to make whatever decision they want. But I'm going with what the books say. You go with what the books say, you're going to see that they ain't real. That they ain't real. Any questions? What you got? I don't know what's going on. I try my hardest to read. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Do you have a question? You ain't got no dog question. No, you ain't got no question. Oh, yes, I do have a question. Any questions online? What's your question, son? How did, how, how did the fight go? Oh, my goodness. Is this what you do in class? I'm going to come sit in the classroom. But I think your teacher too nice to you. <laughs> All right, well, let's pray out. 